Beth, my wife, and I see a lot of things the same, but we have one major way where we don't necessarily see things the same way. Beth likes to throw things away. She likes to do it so much that she threw away her college diploma. I don't like to throw things away. I don't say that I'm a hoarder, I say that I'm a normal person. (laughs) She's not here this morning, can you tell? I'm a normal person who has things that I keep for sentimental and practical reasons. Now, I'm gonna give you a warning. If you are like me, the sermon I'm about to preach is going to be mighty uncomfortable because it was mighty uncomfortable for me. You see, the sermon that we hear this morning, the word of God that we hear this morning that John proclaims to us, calls us to be people who don't hold on to things. It calls us to be people who understand that we're to put repentance into action, to give and live generously, and to not get too consumed by our stuff. So if you're one of those people who likes to hold on to stuff, prepare to feel a nudge from the spirit or your significant other that you might not want. As we hear from John this morning, we pick up where we left off last week, where John is giving to the people this message of repentance. He's calling people to this different way. He's calling people to turn from what they have known to something new and different. And as Mike reminded us last week, repentance is not for the other, it is for us. Repentance is not for those who we think are wrong, it is for us to turn away from the agendas and the things that we hold so dearly and to live a different life. As he said so eloquently last week, repentance reminds us that even when we are right, we can be wrong in the ways that we are right. John has been preaching this message of repentance and in the passage we read this morning, he continues to preach this message. As the people have come to gather, John looks at them and says, you brood of vipers, who told you to flee from the wrath that is to come? It's the best call to worship I've ever heard. (laughs) I've been thinking this week, why does John start this passage like this? And here's what I wonder. I wonder if, if John for a while has been making a scene He's the crazy lunatic preacher who wears funny clothes and eats bugs and kind of proclaims this different message. He's the guy that gets everybody's attention. On a somewhat regular basis, the students come and tell me, Matt, there's a street preacher down on this free speech zone and and he's yelling and screaming and calling us to repent and condemning us from our sins. And he say, people will gather around and they'll watch him and they'll ask him questions and they'll taunt him. And in many ways, John is the crazy street preacher of his day. He is different than what people know from the temple, and so people are coming out just to see what he'll do. They come to watch John, to see what he's about, rather than respond to the message that he is going to preach. And I think John's just fed up with it. He's tired of saying the same thing over and over again, of calling people to repent, of having people show up just to watch, and then do nothing different. John is tired of people coming to hear this message of a different way of being than going and continuing to live their life in the same way, and in this moment, it seems to me that he just snaps. He can't take it anymore because people come and listen but do not leave with changed hearts. There's lots of times where we are told what to do and we think, I'm going to do that and then we do something different. How many times have you gone to the dentist and the dentist says, have you flossed? And you say, yes. And by that you mean, I did for the first time last night. (laughs) And you know the dentist knows, you, you know the dentist knows that you haven't flossed. 
You know, the dentist can tell that you haven't flossed for the previous six months. So the dentist, when you leave the dentist, the dentist says, make sure to floss your teeth. And you nod and say, absolutely. But then you get home and it's late and you don't feel like doing it and your teeth hurt and you just want to go to bed and so you don't floss again. I keep, wait, keep waiting for the dentist to say to me, you brood of vipers, who told you to, fr- <laughs> who told you to flee from the plaque that is to come? You know, like that's what I'm ready for. John's calling us not simply to hear the word of repentance, but to respond to it. It's not simply enough to come and to act like you are the people that you should be. There is something that you must do in response to it. And so when the people say, well, what should we do? What does it look like to put repentance in action? John gives them this very simple thing. He says, listen, share. Don't take what's not yours. And don't be a bully. It sounds like kindergarten lessons, doesn't it? Share, don't take what's not yours, and don't be a bully. John wants the people to put into action this call of repentance. John wants the people to live differently. And what he says to them is not anything outrageous. It's not anything that we can't do. It's not anything that isn't beautifully ordinary. He says this, if you have more than you need, give it away. You probably have more than one coat hanging in your closet and it's hard to read this passage that John gives us where he calls us to this different kind of life to live as generous, giving people to respond to repentance not just by saying it, by by living it and to read this passage about coats and say, I'm sure he means that figuratively. He doesn't. He means it literally. If you've got more than you need, give it to somebody who doesn't have enough. Live as generous people. So I put out a call on social media this week and I said, friends, if you've got more coats than you need, bring a coat. And some people have started to bring coats. Maybe you brought a coat this morning that you don't need. It's been hanging in your closet And there's been this nudge to say, don't hold on to more stuff than what you need. Bring it. Bring it to the altar and lay it down. And at the end of the services, we're going to collect these coats and we're going to take them to the the Salvation Army and they're going to give them to folks who don't have coats. We'll take your shoes. Scott's Run needs boots and shoes. We'll take your hats and gloves and scarves because repentance calls us to this different kind of action. Repentance calls us not simply to hear the message but to live generously. Friends, we practice generosity and we give away what we have to create room for the Spirit to dig out of us the stuff that the Spirit needs to dig out of us. Christmas is not about, it's not about getting, it's not about the stuff. Christmas is about creating space for the Spirit's work to make us new. And sometimes the Spirit works when we can let go of the stuff we've held on to. May we put repentance into action and live as generous people who have been called by a God who is good and kind and generous.